Hey, what's going on, y'all? My name is Dakota. Thanks for watching Tennessee Ray. Today we are out here on a cold day at the Southern Precision Tooling Range, checking out the Phoenix Drake production. Now this is a double action, single action pistol. It is extremely heavy. It's got some awesome features to it. Obviously it's made by Phoenix, which is made in Switzerland. This thing is pretty freaking neat. So huge thanks to the attic for sending this out and letting me check it out. Huge thanks to Southern Precision Tooling for letting me shoot on your range and Target Sports USA for providing the targets for the Southern Precision Tooling range. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, y'all, we're back from the range checking out the Phoenix Drake production. Man, is this thing a fun pistol to shoot. Uh, and as it should be, it's a, it's a really nice pistol. It's got a lot of awesome features. Let's go ahead and roll into them. We're gonna start with the top and work our way down. So on the top here, we have the optic plate system, also the rear, rear sight plate system. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and roll in a short clip talking about this. This is a really awesome design. I'm gonna roll that clip in now. Okay, so since we're talking about the optics plate, I'm just gonna go ahead and show it off. The, I talked about having one issue with it, and my issue with it is from the factory, this little screw right here, as you can see, it's nice and loose. This is the second time that it has loosened itself up on me. So if you, do use these make sure that you use your loctite uh, i wish that that screw had had like a little teflon or something on it but as you can see there it's uh just a regular old screw no teflon no nothing so make sure you use loctite right there to keep that screw from backing out on its own it's just a t10 bit uh, if you do buy one of these pull that screw off first thing i do is pull that screw off and Put some Loctite on it, put it back on if you're not planning on running an optic. Now one thing I have not seen, and hopefully YouTube doesn't kill this video because of this part of it. Anyways, one thing I've not seen is how to install the optic plate or how to get to swap out the optics plate. Okay, so I got that screw off, it's in my pocket, I don't want to lose it. Next step for swapping out the optic plate is going to be this firing pin clip right here. So how you do that is you push the firing pin in like so and just push that clip down and the clip will ease itself down just a little bit and I'm gonna put my finger over the top here so I don't send the firing pin flying across the yard got it so there's the clip or there's the retaining clip firing pin and spring come out there then all you do is you grab a hold of that plate and it should, it'll be tight. It'll be tight and I'll show you why it's tight, but it should slide off the back. First of all, it is tight because they machine everything very well. So it's a very tight fit. You may have to use like a, a rubber punch or something like that to get this off, but it slides off the back just like that. Now, once you get it off, you can see that there are two ball bearings right there and those ball bearings are under spring tension. So I can push them down. And that is part of how they retain their zero. So this, this optic plate system, it is a return to zero optic plate. So what you can do is you can take your iron sights off. You got your RMR, SRO, whatever plate, which are the only ones that are available right now. And those are $180. Uh, but if you want to run an optic plate or an optic, you have to buy the optic plate. And then you, you set your optic to the plate. Then you slide it on just like you would this one. 
put your firing pin and retaining clip back in, put your screw in, and then if you ever want to switch back to your iron sights, switch back from between your iron sights and your optics. So if you're wanting to run production and then run carry optics, you can do that and you're going to maintain your zero on your optic. So that's a pretty cool feature. Like I said, those optic plates are $180. They do not come with the gun. But every single Drake, whether it's the production model like this one or the standard model, which is more designed for a limited uh, or maybe even three gun if that's what you want to use it for, uh, comes with that exact optic plate system. Okay, cool. So as you can see, they've got a really nice plate system and I'm really happy to see that system on here. That's, uh, that's a huge, huge thing for guys. If you're wanting to run production and then also want to run carry optics like two weeks later or whatever you can run it with the same gun without having to swap slides all you do is take the screw out pop that plate off on the back slide the new plate on put it back together and it's ready to rock from there let's go ahead and move forward it has the awesome serrations here along the top of the slide and those serrations do a really good job of fighting the glare so if you're shooting on a really sunny day like today that sun shining down on the top of the uh, slide is not going to affect your, uh, your aiming nearly as much. Forward of that, you have a giant, giant hole uh, port in the top of the slide. So it's really smooth. It's really sleek. They beveled it out really nicely. It's, it's a really nice job. It's clean, uh, and it's, it's enough to take a lot of weight out of the slide without losing the structural integrity of the slide and without making it look funky. Off to the side of that, you have the front cocking serrations. Those things are phenomenal. They absolutely grab your hands. If you go to just touch it, they grab your hands. If you go the opposite direction, like you're coming out of the holster, they don't grab anything. They're super smooth. Forward of that, you have the front sight. Now this is a red fiber optic front sight. I'm sure it's very easy, simple to replace with a green fiber optic if you like that or whatever fiber optic you want. Since we're already at the front, let's go ahead and move down from there. At the front of the gun, we have a barrel bushing. And I heard, uh, so I'm going to give a shout out to MD Polo here. I watched his video whenever he first put out his first video on these, and he did a really good job explaining it. So what it is, it's a Briley style bushing that helps with the smoothness as well as the reliability but Briley bushings didn't last long enough for Phoenix. Phoenix does ended up designing their own bushings for these guns and as you guys might already know if you watched my previous video or if you've watched other videos on the Phoenix pistols they test every single pistol that they design up to 20,000 rounds to make sure that it's going to run reliably for as long as you need it to run. If you have a pistol that runs 20,000 rounds, you're putting a lot of ammo downrange. You're, you're actually shooting it instead of just sitting in the safe, being a safe queen, right? So from the bushing, let's move back. You've got a full length Picatinny rail here. And this is a super thick frame. It's got a ton of weight. It's, a, it's an all stainless gun, so it's heavy. Move back a little bit and you have these panels on the side. And these panels are actually really neat. And this is one thing that helps distinguish between the production model and what they call the standard model. The standard model has these side frames, has a gas pedal or a thumb ledge that is attachable to the side of it. Now this is a smooth side. It's got texture, but it's not, it's not got the attachment points like the standard model does. But you can change these out if you want to get that gas pedal. You can just buy the parts, buy the new side panel, and you have the side panel that works with the, the thumb ledge. So that's a pretty cool feature, but it does have enough texture on that side. So if you're a, a high thumb shooter, like or a thumbs forward shooter, like you should be, your thumb actually grabs in to help control that recoil and keep that muzzle down uh, while you're shooting. So from there, let's move back a little bit. You have a takedown lever. Now I have a problem with CZ 75 type pistols of not being able to access that with my thumb. My thumb's just not long enough. So I have to use the other, my other hand, my support hand. Whenever I come in for a reload, I just hit it as I come in and reestablish my grip just like this. Right. The safety, I feel like the safety on this is just a little thinner than on the Redback that I reviewed. 
which is a, a nice touch. It's, it's not quite as wide. It doesn't catch on my hand as I'm shooting. It doesn't hit on the fat part of my support hand while I'm shooting. Uh, I did unintentionally engage the safety on the red back a couple times while shooting. I didn't have that problem with this pistol. Let's go ahead and move down and talk about the trigger. Now the Drake has a new style trigger that we're also going to see on the Redback Gen 2 that is a more of a squared off trigger. So the double action, single action model, which is the production model, it has this curved, semi-curved, semi-curved with a flat part in the middle and that, and that just grabs your, that, your finger hooks perfectly in there and you pull it straight back and it's ready to rock. Whereas on the standard model, standard model is single action only and it's just a super flat straight face uh, straight blade trigger and it's got the little hole in it just like the red backs the, the red back single action that I reviewed it's got that slot cut in the middle and you actually grab your finger while you're trying to pull that trigger it's it's really nice from there let's move down and talk about the grips so these grips are not the best grips that I've ever felt but they're enough to grab your hand while you're shooting but I'm sure lock grips is probably going to be coming out with some new grips soon if they haven't already and that'll be nothing to just swap those out, take, take two screws out, put two screws back in, and you'll have new grips with whatever aggressive texture you want that they can come up with. It has a really nice uh, beaver tail here. It's nice and long. It actually wraps around the back of my thumb here, and it fits. this gun fits my hand really well, partly because of that beaver tail. You got some checkering on the front here and on the back strap. Magazine release is interchangeable. It's got a set screw here. You can add the uh, the extended mag release if you want to. I didn't have a problem finding the mag release while I was doing reloads on this thing. All in all, this is a really nice, really nice pistol. I mentioned the trigger already. So it's got the double action, single action. So you can pull it all the way back and it goes double action as that action cycles. It now cocks it and goes into single action. And there you go. Now, gonna go ahead and show you, I did some trigger testing or some trigger weight testing with this thing with my trigger gauge. I'm gonna go ahead and roll that footage now. All right, let's do some trigger gauge testing with the Phoenix Drake. Seven pounds, three ounces. Six pounds, six ounces. seven pounds, four ounces. So an average pull, 615, which is an ounce under seven pounds. All right, let's go ahead and go into single action. And this will be a lot easier because the shoe's already back. Three pounds, 13 ounces. That was a little heavier than I think it normally is. Three pounds, 11 ounces. Three pounds, eight ounces. So an average pull, three pounds, 11 ounces there across three pulls. Cool, so not bad. Uh, the trigger weight's about what you want it to be for a competition pistol. You don't want it to get too light and start having negligent discharges or accidental discharges, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we don't want to have those problems. And it's super crisp. There is an absolute wall, so even in double action, it's there. It's, it's at the wall as soon as you put your finger on the trigger. Take up is full weight the whole way. Boom, right there. Single action, back out. And there's just a little bit of take up there after, after the reset and back on the wall. The wall on this trigger is super crisp. Uh, it's, it's one of the best, if not the best triggers that I've ever felt. I do prefer a single action only, but for the purpose of this gun, it makes sense. It's a competition pistol. Competitions, certain competitions, certain classifications that this fit in, fits into require you to run either a striker fired or a double action, single action pistol. I'm not going to complain about it not having a decocker. I've gotten so many hateful comments about my Redback video that had the DASA. Uh, <laughs> listen. I understand it would affect the the trigger if you had a decocker, but I 
also feel like for the purpose of safety, it would be nice to have that decocker to just sw swipe it down real quick, put it in double action mode, and not have to worry about having an ND on the range and getting sent home. The price point on this thing is $4,700, and yeah, that's a lot of money. But if you want to have the best pistol in the game for a competition pistol for production or carry optics, this is, <laughs> it don't get no better than this, uh, as they say here in the South. This, that's for the production model. If you move up to the standard model, then it's $5,500, but that comes with the side plates that have the, the thumb rest, that comes with a single action only trigger, it comes with a magazine well and four magazines that have an extended base plate to make them 20 rounds. Whereas the production model comes with four magazines that are 17 round mags. A couple quick things to add on top of the magazines. It comes with a soft case. Uh, and in that soft case, it also has a metal barrel bushing tool as well as a cleaning kit so that you can really get this thing clean. Uh, one thing I also don't want to forget, it comes in three color options. So the first color option is duo tone which is right here, it's the stainless with the black. And then it also comes in all stainless and all black. So you can get it as is, or you can get it all stainless or all black. Pretty cool, they look really good too. So huge thanks to the Attic up in Minot, North Dakota for sending this out. They're the sole importer of these pistols in the United States. I appreciate you guys sending this out and letting me review it. Uh, huge thanks to my buddy M1 Ping for lining this up and making it happen. Man, <laughs> I never thought I would ever be able to get my hands on stuff that's this nice. So I appreciate you guys making it happen. All right, we're going to see if we can turn this plate rack at 40 yards. First try. <laughs> First try. That just goes to show how good this gun really is. So I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for checking out Tennessee Ray. As always, make yourself better today. Hit the, link in, hit the links in the description below. Help support the channel. Make sure you like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. All right, breaking out the pack timer in the rain and the cold, doing a build drill, starting in double action. All right, I got a 2-2, two, 2-2-2, two, 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 a 1-1-6 one, one, draw, that's slow. 2-2, two, 2-3, two, 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 zero, two, one, two, zero. Dude, if you don't believe me that it's cold out here, look at that. <laughs> that is ice on my sleeve. <laughs> it's fun. Let's, let's keep going.